one person walks straight through and another person like dies four times before they escape. So, yeah. Bureaucracy. <laughs> Hey, this is Dan and Michelle from Honeymoon Always, and we have been living in Portugal for one year now. Yay! Um, so about a year ago, we put out a video about why we're moving to Portugal. And at the time, we were mostly announcing it to friends and family, like days before we left, because we hadn't told so many people. And we wanted to document our time here. And last, we wanted to share our experience because we know as we were preparing to move to Portugal, seeing other people's experiences really helped us. So we're going to look back on the reasons we moved and what we thought we were getting ourselves into, where we were wrong, where we were right, and then some things that, you know, we didn't even expect. Hopefully this will be helpful to those of you who are interested in the expat experience. If it is, please follow along with us on Instagram at Honeymoon Always and subscribe to our channel. Okay, so the first thing we listed as our reason for moving to Portugal is financial. So number one, we really wanted to be self-employed and doing that in the United States is very expensive and it was a leap that we really weren't willing to take in the United States considering healthcare costs and business costs and all of that, knowing that one of us would probably want to stay employed in a traditional workplace to maintain health insurance. And so moving to Portugal allowed us to kind of be free of that a bit. But also we were expecting a lower cost of living here in Portugal. Dan, how would you say that's going? I think that's been going great. We have saved a ton of money by not having to worry about healthcare costs in the US versus Portugal, and our cost of living has gone down. I think there were a couple areas where we aren't saving quite as much as I expected, especially like going out to eat. Before we came, I heard like about the daily specials and I thought we'd be able to go to a Portuguese restaurant and just get like a lunch for six to eight euros all the time and just that hasn't quite worked out for us. But in general, Yes, we're saving money on cost of living. Yeah, I think it's really important if you're planning to move here. We say this all the time in our videos, but make sure you do your research. Compare other people's budgets against what you expect to spend and how you expect to live your life. I have personally seen a lot of content that really seemed to push home this idea that Portugal is a magical paradise where you don't have to spend any money. Like all of your dreams will come true. You will be so comfortable. You can travel the world. And also it's going to be very cheap. And in almost all those cases, I really believe someone is trying to sell you something. I don't think that is an accurate representation of what your life will be like here. Portugal is a wonderful place, objectively, full stop. We love living here. But I just advise people to be skeptical of messages about how cheap it is or how all of your life dreams will come true once you move here. Yeah, I've heard two phrases that like, always come up and it's when someone's asking in a Facebook group, can I live off of this amount of money? And people will say, the Portuguese minimum wage is this. Mm -hmm. So because you have more than that, you will be living like kings and queens. Uh, I hear that so much. And there's a reason that Portuguese people are always protesting asking for the minimum wage to go up because it's not a good wage to gauge how much you should live off of right. in Portugal. So I guess I just feel like that's not a great metric for comfort here and you know we definitely want to be cognizant of the people who live here and how they live here and sure you could move to a town outside of one of the bigger cities and reduce your cost of living significantly you can 100 percent do that and i think you could be 100 percent comfortable but just know that there are i think some unrealistic expectations out there and doing your own research and and by that I mean comparing what you expect to spend on individual things. So look at apartment rentals, look at grocery store prices, look at restaurant menus to get an actual sense of what you might spend. I think will be more accurate than maybe expecting that your cost of living is magically just gonna go down. Yeah, and I'll just say that I have changed my tone on one thing and that is I now understand more that it. Uh, the difference in lifestyles within Americans moving here to know that not everyone is going to spend like us. When we say we want to go out to eat a lot, that might mean two meals a week for someone else and 10 meals a week for someone else. And I know a lot of people are retiring to Portugal and your lifestyles could probably be a bit more relaxed than ours because we're still working a ton and moving around a bit more. So I can see why someone that's retiring here will spend less than us. So anyway, we have said it a million different ways, <laughs> but basically do your research. Yes, you should save money moving here if you're coming from an average cost of living in the U.S. And um, that's been great for us. Yeah.
So we spoke already about healthcare and how cost brought us here, but also it's a top rated healthcare system in the world and it's supposed to be great quality. So as someone who goes to the doctor fairly frequently, I will say that quality has been great, the cost has been great, but even though medicine seems like it would be you know, more universal because humans are humans, there is still a lot of culture placed on top of that. And that's been tricky to navigate. I have experienced things where I'm like, I don't know if, Amer if I was getting better care in America or better care here because the care is just different. And that's been confusing for me. And there's, there's one case where we are exploring medical tourism just because I want to get a third opinion because culture is different. Another thing that's been difficult to navigate is that even though I'm able to choose doctors who speak in English, thank goodness, because my Portuguese is very poor, there's still a lot of nuance in conversation around health that can be difficult to communicate. And so I still would make the choice to come here, but there have frankly been things that have been more difficult to navigate, scary to navigate, frustrating. So, you know, it's kind of like if you break your arm, you're good to go because like they can do an x-ray, see the arm is broken, it's gonna be super cheap to like pay for it, unlike the US. So it's like great for that kind of thing, but whenever you go into anything nuanced, it's, you might come across some issues, which is also similar in the US in that sometimes you have to shop around for a doctor who understands you, who listens to you. So just add on cultural differences. And that's kind of what you're dealing with with healthcare here. So the third reason we listed for moving here was geography and climate. And 10 out of 10, it's beautiful. We live near a beach. It's less hot than Austin. Love it. Yeah, the temperature is great. It does get a little warm, but we were expecting that. So much better than Austin heat. But also, we learned that there's dolphins in the river that we have a view of. <laughs> so like, it's even better. <laughs> you just learned that there's like orca whales that come there like once every five years or something. So we're gonna get binoculars. We're gonna stare at them. Yes. <laughs> the next thing we listed was travel opportunities. And that has been great. We are so close to so many destinations. And it's funny because we just came back from Paris. And in the US, if we came back from Paris, it would mean like we'd be totally drained. Here, we left around four and got here and had to find dinner. And we were like, you know, just kept on going. <laughs> so yeah. that's been fun. The other thing I'll say is it did take us longer to kind of get going with travel. And that's just because when you land here, you still have to deal with residency and all this paperwork and bureaucracy. So it took us a little while to really get going, which I did not expect. Yeah, but we have a lot of fun travel coming up. I mean, some of you might know that our business is travel. We have a travel website, honeymoonalways.com, and that's really gonna be ramping up. So we're really excited to be able to travel. I mean. Next week, we're going to Spain, and then we're going to the UK after that. We're going to Greece. So we're really excited to be able to do all of that from our hub here. And as our business grows and changes, we will be able to grow and change with that as well. And with that in mind, we have been asked a ton for help with planning trips to Portugal. And if you sign up for our newsletter, we will let you know when we have itineraries or planning opportunities or even some group trips that you can join with us here in Portugal. So the fifth reason we listed was ease of getting a visa, which I'm realizing having been here and processed it, I actually think that was an even bigger contributor to us moving here specifically than we had even really thought about that much. But as compared to other European countries, the ease of getting a visa is so great. But one thing that I don't know that they've really like worked the kinks out of fully is like what happens next? Like you get here and there's all these things that you need to do as an American or as an expat to assimilate to get registered and it just feels a little bit um, dizzying trying to get those things accomplished. One thing that was a major headache for us was taxes, especially as people who have a business. I think they have it fairly cut and dry if you're retired, but for us that was, that was one of the more frustrating things to happen while we've been here. So I think we've said it in other videos, but if you have a business, please take a look at some tax people in Portugal who may be able to help you understand both American and Portuguese taxes to make sure that's gonna work for you before you move. We do know of some people who are choosing to move out of Portugal after having moved here for less than a year because the taxes just aren't accommodating uh, what they need for their business. Next is safety. And I think this one's pretty cut and dry. It is extremely safe here. I've never felt unsafe, even when we're out late at night or anything like that. Yeah, we see things in a Facebook groups every so often about like, which neighborhood is safe in Lisbon? Or even, oh, this this dangerous thing just happened to me. Like you still have to know your surroundings and, and be aware of where you are. But 
as compared to the United States, I mean, we, we listed in our original video that Portugal's ranked like third or fourth safest country in the world and the United States is like 128th. So we are still, we still feel very safe here. And when we traveled back to the US for Christmas, we felt less safe. So two thumbs up. This next one, we are very happy to say we were correct on, which is community. We heard that Portuguese people were some, they ranked some of the most friendly people in the world. And for us, that has 100% been the case. Not only that, but the expat community has been so friendly to us. We have more friends here than we did in Austin, and we just feel really grateful to be here. And yeah. Yeah, I think with other people that have immigrated to Portugal like us, you already have that common thing already like binding you together, and it makes it easier to make friendships here. I will say that Portugal is just like everywhere else in the world in that there are a bunch of individuals. And so just because that they are ranked the most friendly people in the world, doesn't mean everyone is super friendly or super in a good mood or has, isn't having a bad day. Just like you go anywhere in the US, you will encounter people here that are not friendly. Uh, if you go to the DMV in the US, you're not gonna find friendly people there. <laughs> <laughs> here, if you go to the immigration office, you're probably not gonna find friendly people there. <laughs> um, but overall, people are very friendly and we've been able to establish a community here very quickly. All right, the next thing we talked about was lifestyle. And with that, we wanted to embrace the European lifestyle that we had heard of, of a more relaxed vibe where you're not so engulfed in your career and just kind of take a step back, relax. That's what we've been going for. There's a lot about being here that has relieved a lot of stress, a lot of stress. I will say I have not been perfect at shedding that, like your job is your identity thing. So those things are gonna take more time. It's not an immediate thing once you land here. When you move to a new place, you still maintain who you are. And there's a lot of self work that has come from being here. I've, I've felt like it's been a lot of like forced therapy, but in a really good way. These are the things that we've wanted. And so just keeping an eye on the things we identified as what we wanted. And when things are uncomfortable, Recognizing, okay, I'm just in the middle of it, but this is what I want has been really helpful. Yeah, we've lived in Portugal for one year. Mm -hmm. We lived in America for more than 30 years. <laughs> so like, it's still in our core. Yeah. And like, I find it when I meet someone in the US, it's always like, hey, how you going? What's your name? What do you do? And then here, I'm like biting my tongue, like, don't ask them, <laughs> don't ask them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just because it's just not culturally what people spring to here. And even when I talk to Americans when they come here, I try not to do it and just try to not think about work as much. Yeah. Try because, you know, we can't change everything overnight. One thing we mentioned in our video that I thought was cute is, you know, we had heard before moving here that bureaucracy is a thing that frustrates people. And the other side of that being like a difference in customer service. And I just think it's funny because we thought, oh, it's fine because it will force us to slow down, which is part of the lifestyle that we want. And I just think it's like, it was like a cute naive thing for us to say because <laughs> there are parts of it that are slowing down, right? Like going to a restaurant and having a server basically ignore you for two hours is kind of nice now. And we've really grown to love it and that's great. Um, but there are other parts of it that I think are really hard to deal with and difficult to describe, and especially coming from an American lifestyle and being raised as an American with certain expectations around how people who are employed at a place will help you. It's just been really frustrating. Uh, for example, we went to get our address changed at the immigration office yesterday. Dan and I were separated for some reason in the line and then they helped Dan, no problem. And for some reason, me doing the exact same thing just with a different person was so much harder. They wouldn't accept my forms of payment even though I had the exact same payment that Dan had just paid with. They didn't know how much to charge me even though they had just charged Dan. And it took Dan coming over and like connecting with the person who helped him to convince the woman who was helping me that in fact, this is how much she should charge me and you can't accept the form of payment that I brought. Anyway, so it's, it's an example of how it really depends on who you talk to when you go to try to get things accomplished. And it may, you know, we've, we've been able to accomplish everything we've needed to. It's just going to take a lot longer and a lot more patience. Yeah, it's kind of like you have to solve a puzzle anytime you need to do something as opposed to like in the US, you're usually gonna have like a set order of how to do things and get it done. Where here there's like uh, a broad recommendation and 
this person will tell you how they did it, but it's almost like an adventure to do anything that has to do with bureaucracy. And we've learned how to navigate it. There's so many helpful Facebook groups that you can learn from, but it is much harder than I expected. The best thing we can say is like, it, it is teaching us, uh, it, I don't know if patience is the right word. <laughs> I don't know what it's teaching us, but, um, <laughs> But yeah, we're learning. And um, I will also say that it's not just us. Like at the immigration office yesterday, there were lots of Brazilians. There's some people from Angola and they speak Portuguese and they were just having much, even much more frustration than we were having. We saw people outside yelling on the phone, like having the absolute worst day. Yeah. So it's not just Americans. Like we are very few immigrants that come to Portugal are American. So I don't know, I just feel like validated, I guess. Yeah, and I even I posted about this experience yesterday on Instagram and I received a lot of messages about people who had this same issue in Portugal, but also people who had this issue in China and Italy. And so it's not just like, we're not trying to like throw Portugal under the bus by any means, but these are the types of things that can make uh, your day difficult. But I will say in some of our experience is not really, reflective of our whole experience here because mostly we are extremely happy to be here. It's just every once in a while you've got to get something taken care of and you know it's going to be a task because it's like a mystery puzzle, like an escape room that you have to like figure out all the hurdles to get through. And one person walks straight through and another person like dies four times before they escape. So, yeah. It's bureaucracy. <laughs> The ninth reason we listed about choosing Portugal or moving to Portugal was the language. Dan came here speaking Brazilian Portuguese, which I think we thought would be m m like 100% helpful, but it's turned out to be like 80% helpful because it's Brazilian Portuguese and not European Portuguese. And people kind of describe the difference in language as like American English and British English, but I would describe it more as like American English and Scottish English, where there has been more of a learning curve. Yeah, and additionally, it's just most people speak English to us. Yeah. So it's like, I'll speak Portuguese and they'll respond in English. And so it's harder to practice. As someone who is learning Portuguese, but still predominantly just speaks English, the amount of speaking English that happens here has been so helpful to me. There are times when like, them being able to speak English is not enough. Like in medical circumstances, I've walked up to the pharmacy and tried to have conversations with the pharmacist in English. And there are just certain terminologies that most people wouldn't ever come by, like, you know, body parts or whatever, medical terms, or like I asked a doctor if I could take a specific medication, but she hadn't heard the English name for it. So she thought I was talking about a, a, a medicine that had a similar root word, which I later realized was not the same medicine and that explains some of the swirl that we had around it. And so there are some things that are just harder to do if you don't speak 100% fluent European Portuguese. But all in all, I have felt like we're able to accomplish everything we need to. Yep, even if you don't speak Portuguese. Yes. And we wanted to spend more time with family. And so this past winter, we went back to Portland and we spent like over a month with Michelle's family. So that's kind of a funny thing that happened that most people wouldn't expect by moving to Portugal, we'd be able to spend more time with family, but it just allowed us to have more freedom with how we spend our time. Yeah, I mean, that's mostly a symptom of us having become self-employed. But one thing that I think is funny is we said in our video, like, oh, we hope people come to visit us. And basically no one has. So this is a direct message to my friends and family. Like, where are you? Come to Europe, come visit us we want to hang out with you. Kim did visit. That's true. Kim did visit and we met up with some friends in, <laughs> in, in, France. in France and I have had some old work friends come through. Anyway, this is for my parents mostly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so how else do you think we've changed in this year? Okay, so the big thing for me is I think I'm more introspective on like what comes from me being raised in the United States and my beliefs and my gut reactions and things like that versus what is just me being human and then how the ideals here in Europe or in Portugal relate to that and me just trying to like bring it all together to you know adjust accordingly because I think I don't think everything that I grew up was wrong or anything like that I just see like oh my knee-jerk reaction to that was this 
should I try to adjust that? Am I in the wrong? Or is this a situation where there's no wrong, is no right? I don't know if I'm making any sense. <laughs> but basically, I've just been really introspective into like my own thoughts, feelings, beliefs, values, and how I see the world because I live in a different country that has such different culture. Yeah. And another thing I notice is just when Americans do come and we like meet for lunch or something like that, I just know that we can just like sense the added anxiety and like stress that they have and that we kind of have almost left behind in just one year of being here. It's been really interesting as people get very understandably stressed and concerned about things going on in the world and especially in the way that it is distributed and communicated in the United States. It's it's interesting to see. It's not that we're not aware of those things. Like we're on the internet. We're still talking to our friends. We still read the news, but it's so different that we feel a little bit less, not a little bit less, a lot less connected to that level of stress. So when people want to talk about certain things going on, where I used to feel a lot of, um, energy around trying to fix all the problems and trying to communicate what I thought to be the truth, I now feel like not as connected to doing that. And I am a lot more aware of when I am ingesting information that makes me feel upset. So I used to be a very heavy Twitter user and I just realized like every time I turned it on, I get upset about something. And I was reading news that confirmed all the things that I believed because it was curated for me, but it was still causing me to get angry and get tensed up. And that's just not how I want to live my life. So we don't go on there anymore. I think that's a benefit of having the clarity of being here where a lot of the stressors are taken away and a lot of that messaging is taken away. So I'm just more in tune with my feelings, my own reactions. Yeah. And it kind of feels like we're on the outside looking in as opposed to being in the middle of it. Yeah. And yeah, I just wish everyone can kind of relax. That's the thing is when people talk about it, I do wish like you don't have, you don't have to, Mm, it's not that I think you shouldn't care about stuff, but it's like, it doesn't have to be as all consuming as I feel that it is. And it was for me when I lived there. Yeah. So that is the message that I wish that we could in a more sensitive way, communicate to the people that we meet. Yeah. And I don't want to sound arrogant, like, oh, I moved to Portugal and <laughs> changed my world. You know, like we have seen some changes in our life, and, but we still, you know, are works in progress and trying to be better people. And yeah, for sure. And we also are not the people who are saying like America is bad and you know, we'll never go back. I don't think that's the case. We know that there are people who have been successful at alleviating a lot of these same external factors while living in the United States. We've talked about this, about like having a better diet that like means, you know, there's a lot, like there's higher food standards here in Europe. So we have felt better and our skin is better. There are people in the United States who eat that way, but they have a lot more discipline than we do. <laughs> and so it's not that you can't live that way wherever you are. It's just that this has made it very easy for us and we're really grateful for that. So looking back for a year, is there anything you wish you would have known before we came? Um, <laughs> well, number one, natural deodorant is not gonna cut it. <laughs> I think if I've learned, like you're just outside so much and it is really sunny here, but we were just in Paris and it was the same issue. So PSA from me to you, transfer to that good stuff. We learned that there's a lot of haters on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that's true. I was very surprised about that. You know, when we first started putting our stuff on the internet, we didn't really expect very many people to watch. Like, we did not have, we did not have a following by any means. And uh, some of the reaction has been full of emotion. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> we're just trying to share our experience, things we've learned, and some people just kind of come at us, like, from one way or the other. Yeah. And that's fine, you can just call us stupid Americans. Which, no, totally that's fine. Like, all we can ever do is share our experience as Americans who have moved to Portugal. That is exclusively what we can do. We can never represent the experience of Portuguese people or anyone else. Yeah. This is just our experience and hopefully it's either helpful or entertaining or, you know, if you're a hater, you just try to keep those comments to yourself. Or no, comment below, it helps you. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ignore what I said. <laughs> no, but overall, I just think, uh, I didn't realize how much change it was gonna be. Yeah. I'm happy about that because if you're just kind of chugging along, doing the same thing in the US, you never will like grow as much, but having like put ourselves in a super uncomfortable situation at times, and really pushed our boundaries uh, of comfort 
allowed us to change. Yeah, I think a, a message that someone had said to us or shared with us at one point was like, you know, we were we were miserable in our comfort zone. So we had to get out of our comfort zone to hope to find something different. And I'm really grateful that we did, but it can be really hard to get out of that, like that cycle of that thing that makes you, like you're comfortable there, but you're not happy. And if that's you, I hope you take that chance on yourself because this is the time you map. Yeah, and we weren't even miserable. We, we enjoyed life. <laughs> okay, that is a good point. We weren't like miserable, miserable, but there were things that we thought could be better. Yeah. And they are better. Yeah. So that is our one year review of having lived in Portugal. If you have any other questions for us or wonder about our experience at all, please leave a comment below. Like Dan said, if you were a hater, leave your hateful comments below. We appreciate the engagement. Uh, follow along with us on Instagram at Honeymoon Always. Subscribe to our channel and we'll talk to you later.